turn to your neighbor and say Jambo should they look good tell them you'll really look good this morning even as we raise up some praise to the Lord yeah then you put your hands together this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made We will rejoice We will rejoice And be glad in it And be glad in it Help me sing This is the day that the Lord has made Yeah, we will rejoice And be glad in it Yeah, this is the day This is the day that the Lord has made One more time This is the day Oh! 
praise. Just go ahead and confess that there is no God like Jehovah. In your own voice, in your own language, in your own song. Just tell him, Lord, there is no one who compares to you. You saved me from the miry clay. Set my feet upon the rock. And now I know. Once I was, we were not a people, now we are. Oh Lord, you hemmed us in, O oh God. We choose you, Lord. We worship you, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, King of Kings, Lord.
Holy name of oh 
is none like you, Lord. There is none besides you, our God. Oh, yes, we God. worship you with all our hearts. We worship you, Lord God Almighty. We worship oh, you this God. morning, oh dear Lord. Our hearts worship you, Lord. We tell our souls to worship you. We tell our souls to magnify you this morning. How can we be silent in the presence of a great God like you? How can we be silent in the presence of a holy God? We worship you, our God. We worship you, eternal God. We worship you this morning. We stand in awe of you, Lord. We stand in awe of you, our great God, our great deliverer, our great shepherd. How can we be silent in your presence, Lord, when you cause us to lie down in green pastures, when you cause us, O oh God, to walk beside still waters? Yes, Lord, you restore our souls. You have restored our souls to trust in you again. You have restored our souls to hope in you again, to wait on you again, to magnify your holy name again, to come back to your paths. Yes, you have restored us, O oh God, and therefore we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, O oh God, we thank you. You cause us, O oh God, to walk in paths of righteousness. For your name's sake, O oh God. Only you can cause us to walk in paths of righteousness. And yes, Lord, even in the valley of the shadow of death. O oh God, we will fear no evil. For you are with us, O oh God. Lord, your presence has preserved us, O oh God. Your presence has caused us not to be destroyed. Your presence, O oh God, you are with us, O oh God. Even in the difficulties, even in the hard times, O oh God. In that dark valley, O oh God. In the shadow of death. Oh, we are preserved because you are with us. Your rod, your staff, they comfort us, O oh God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, O oh Lord. You teach us your ways, O oh God. Oh, we thank you and we worship you this morning. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Do not be silenced in the presence of God, church. Open your mouth and worship him this morning. Just magnify the name of the Lord. Just magnify the name of the Lord. We are in his house to worship him. To call him worthy. To call him holy. To call him mighty, O oh God. You who watches over us, you do not sleep nor slumber. We are grateful because of who you have been in our lives, O oh God. We are grateful, Lord, that you have walked with us, that you have been our God, you have been our shepherd, you have been our great help, and we worship you this morning. No one can worship you for us, O oh God. No one can worship you for us, our Savior. No one can worship you for us this morning, oh God. We bless your name. Jesus, we worship you. Son of the living God, you are exalted in this sanctuary this morning. You are exalted as our Savior and our rock. Our salvation, our poor fortress this morning. Our great hope. Our great hope. The hope that we cling to, oh God, in a hopeless world. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise your holy name this morning. Oh, be glorified, Jesus. Be exalted, our God. We worship you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Be exalted. Be exalted in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Would you come and have your way in our midst, to God? Would you come and heal us this morning? Would you come and minister to our souls this morning? As we worship you. As we worship you, Jesus. Your presence, your presence, Lord. Your presence is what we crave for, oh God. Oh, come and have your way, Lord. Have your way. Come and have your way, restorer, rebuilder, healer. Come and have your way. Come and minister to us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Congregation, I just want us to be have a heart of thanksgiving. The Bible says, rejoice, and again I say rejoice in the Lord. Yesterday evening, we were in our safari group as men, and we were thanking God that you can actually coordinate your hands and your feet, that you are here this morning, that you can breathe, that you took some tea, or maybe even you did not take tea, that you can see, that you can breathe. You have the gift of salvation. We have many things to thank God for. He do not Don't take it for granted that you're breathing this morning, that you're alive, that you're well. Hallelujah. Let us give thanks. Give thanks in your different situations, in your circumstances. It be rose, it even be what you want, but give thanks to God. We were reminded that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Therefore, you have the yoke of Christ. He's with you in your situation and in your circumstance. Give thanks. Give thanks. Let us give thanks. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt you for you are God. And there is none like you, O oh God. And you are here with us this morning, moving in our situations. Even when we cannot see you, we know you are moving. When we cannot hear you, we know you are there, O oh God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are high and lifted up, O oh God. You cannot be cornered, O oh God. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Today, O oh God, you are healing us. You are moving in our midst, O oh God. Father, we worship and we exalt you. We thank you for the different situations and circumstances. You are Lord over each and every one of them, O oh God. We exalt you, my Father. The word of God says the just shall live by faith. By faith, not by sight. And therefore, I want us to think of the promises that God has given each and every one of us. And individually, let us trust God. Just pray, just pray, and lay hold, lay hold of the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you, King of glory, for the different situations and circumstances, for the relationships in our midst, oh God, that are rocky, my Father. Lord, we are saying in the name of Jesus Christ, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well. Perhaps some, oh God, do not have rent. Father, silver and gold belong to you. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. And we are looking to you for provision, my Father. Schools are opening. Perhaps school fees has not been paid. And we are praying, oh Father, may you provide, oh God, for that sister, for that brother, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father, we exalt you. We exalt you, my Father. By faith, we are laying hold of your promises. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only, O oh God. From glory to glory, we are not moving back. We are going forward. We bless you, Father. We are pushing on in you, O oh God. And we are strong in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And therefore, we rejoice in you, my Father. We rejoice in you, O oh God. For you are King, O oh God. Be exalted and be lifted up, my Father. We want to lift up those amongst us who are sick. The word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. The word of God says he forgives us of all our sins and heals us of all our diseases, oh God. And so therefore we want to declare your word. Father, you said your word shall not return to you void. And we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are speaking to every person who is not feeling well. Father, we are saying, oh God, the devil shall not have his way. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. We are calling the things that are not as though they are. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you, Satan. Every spirit of sickness and infirmity, we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak healing. We speak healing. We pray over Lima, oh God. She's the mother to our sister, um, Rose, oh God. And we speak healing of our, of, over, over Lima. Father, we commit her into your hands. Wherever she is, my Father, I pray that you would touch and heal and bring restoration to the glory and to the honor of your name. And Lord, we are also aware there, there are those amongst us who are bereaved, O oh Father. 
how we pray your comfort, how we pray for, Lord, your strength, O oh Father. I pray, Father, that you'd wipe away every tear. O oh Father, we exalt you and we worship you in every situation because you are God. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the concluded conference. We want to thank you, Lord, for realigning our thinking. We want to thank you, God, for the souls that have been won and will be won because of what in our we bless you. We honor my Father. We also commit our nation into your hands. In the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, O oh God. We ask, Lord, that you would reign over this land, O oh God. That your hand, O oh God, you hold all things together. That you would hold this nation together. Father, we pray, O oh God, for your blessings. We ask, Father, that you would give wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to our president, O oh God. To his deputy, my father. We commit the incoming government into your hands, O oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ as cabinet secretaries are appointed and different appointments. Are made Lord. Lord, you be who speaks to our president, that you be the one who appoints, O oh God. I pray, Father, that your will and your purposes will be done and fulfilled in this great nation. So be exalted, my Father. Thank you, Lord, because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, because you are doing it for us. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Nalita, Nalita, Gina, Lako, Namini, Wesa. Just repeat that. Nalita, Nalita, Gina, Lako, Namini, Wesa. Nalita, Nalita, Gina, Lako, upon you and I know the Lord is doing something in every one of our lives this morning thank you thank you may we appreciate our worship team the Lord bless you you have ministered to us very well God bless you thank you you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord good morning church praise the Lord 
Beautiful to see every one of you this wonderful morning that the Lord has given us. We are glad that you came. Even those that are following us online, we thank God for you. Feel at the feet of Jesus. Well, we had a wonderful week. I'm sure those that came either in person or followed online, you can agree with me that it has been an impactful week, very challenged and encouraged to go out and share the love of Christ. But you know what? I think it is easier to talk about someone you love and someone you know. And so I think it is also a time for us to begin to cultivate a more closer walk with our God a more intimate walk with the Lord Jesus. That we may love him with all our hearts, with all our souls, our minds and strength, so that it will be easier for us to talk about him, to tell others about what he has done, because we have experienced the power of his resurrection. Amen. So may we do this so that it will be easier to talk about Jesus to others. And in just in case you're here and you do not know the Lord, you have not understood what we are talking about when we say we go out and share the love. I will urge you, as the service goes on, eh, look out for that opportunity, just an opportunity to get to know the Lord so that you'll be part of this great commission. You will be able to plug in. Buona sifiwe. Amen. And so if you're here and it is your first time, you have not fellowshiped with us at Sitam Valley Road before. Kindly, by a show of hand, may we see you, just to appreciate you where you are. Wow, there are hands going up everywhere. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate them. Please take another step of faith and just be on your feet. Be upstanding. We just want to see you and appreciate you more. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you for joining us. Welcome to Sitam Valley Road, where Christ is the answer. And so... Uh, just in case you're passing by, just remain standing, please. I say a few words. Just in case you're passing by and you have to go back to your church next Sunday, please carry our greetings. But just in case you have been looking for a place to worship the Lord, please, you have just found the right place. Feel at the feet of Jesus. Uh, find it in your heart to join us every other Sunday just to come and fellowship with us. Karibu Nisana will love visitors. At the end of the service, don't be in a hurry to leave. We have our ladies and gentlemen in black, no, yeah, black and blue, yeah? Blue tops and just black skirts or trousers. And a bunch written welcome team. Those are our welcome team uh, people. At the end of the service, you can walk up to one of them and they will lead you to our welcome room where you will have an interactive session just to get to know us better. And we, as we get to know you more. So feel welcome. You may have your seats. The Lord bless you. Thank you. At this point, we want to give our offerings as the media team rolls out the announcements. So as you get ready, let's pray for the offerings. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are a great giver. And we thank you that, Lord, you have blessed us in many ways. And even as we worship you with our giving this morning, I pray that, Lord, you will continue to release your blessings upon your people. We pray for wisdom in dispersing these funds, even as they come into the ministry. Father, we thank you and bless you, for we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. Media team, please. And just as this is happening, we... Good morning to you. Where in the service. Sorry. That is Eric, Wekesa, Bunyas, and Diana. Diana Liz. If you're here, kindly you can be walking up as this is happening. God bless you. Very warm welcome to our fellowship today, the 25th of September. Wherever you are, a very warm welcome to our fellowship today, the 25th of September, 2022. It is a great honor to have you worship with us. We appreciate your support towards God's work through your tithes and offerings here in Valley Road. To worship through giving, use the offering bags passed through by the ashes. You can also use our Mpesa Pay Bill number 933939 and in the account indicate whether it is a tithe or an offering. If you wish to draw a check, please do so in favor of 
of Christ is the Answer Ministries. You can also visit our office reception to swipe your card at the end of this service. God bless you as you give. Thank you. Family Care Ministry Face invites all those who intend to wed from January to April 2023 to register for the next premarital class. The class will run from 8th October to 19th November. Registration will begin today at the reception desk. Do you work near church, stay near church, or just pass by church as you go to work? The prayer ministry invites you to a time of in-person prayer every morning 6 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. at Richard Bombay Hall. Please note the 4 a.m. prayers are still on every Monday and Friday. Zoom links will be shared on our various platforms. Baptism class will take place today at 11.30 a.m. at Richard Bombay Hall. Thereafter, baptism by water immersion will take place at Sita Moodley. We announce the bands of marriage between Dan Kibet Tumbo and Trufosa Mbalete Kimuyu, intending to end on the 1st of October 2022, 10 a.m. at Sita Moodley. We announce the bands of marriage between Manasseh Muwa Mutisia and Catherine Wanzawa Vinya, intending to wed on the 8th of October 2022, 10 a.m. at Sitam Karim. We announce the bands of marriage between Eric Wekesa Bunyasi and Diana Liz Nyamoita, intending to wed on the 1st of October 2022, 10 a.m. at Fushia Gardens. We announce the bands of marriage between Moses Karuri and Federita Karimi to wed on the 13th of October 2022, 11 a.m. at Taji Gardens Thika. We announce the bands of marriage between Julius Lawi Onyango and Patricia Akinyi Othieno to wed on 14th October 2022, 10 a.m. at Sitam Valley Road. We announce the bands of marriage between Elisha Stephen Lugalia and Praxidis Chepkemoi to wed on the 14th of October 2022, 10 a.m. at Sitam Valley Road. If anyone has a valid reason why these persons should not be lawfully wedded, kindly inform the church office in writing at least seven days before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. Young people, I've heard you have something to say. Representing all event lovers, I am Sarah. Well, every young person wants to belong and be celebrated when they hit a major life milestone. When my Rora show comes, I want the warmth of my community around me. Representing sociable young people, my name is Michael. I love interacting with young people, hearing different perspectives of life. I want a platform where I can grow my personal network and my friendships. Hi. I'm Priscilla. Hear me out. I want a space that is relatable to me for spiritual growth with like-minded young people. Representing outgoing young people, I'm Liz and I'm an accountant. I do not love living a boring life. I want to surround myself with like-minded people who love fun and exciting activities. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And it's official. It's happening. The Young Professionals Fellowship, which is a community of people who are aged 25 to 34, is relaunching. Allow us to take over two hours of your calendar on the 2nd of October from 2 to 4 p.m. here at Seaton Valley Road, Dennis Whitehall, as we relaunch a group of vibrant young people. There's only one thing you need to do. Any guesses? Show up on Sunday, 2nd October from 2 p.m. Yay! It's, it's happening! happening. I'm going there. Don't you want to go? We are proud to bring to you the third Sitem Business Conference in partnership with Absa Bank Kenya from October 20th to the 22nd this year at Sitem Karen. There will be over 5,000 participants from Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, and Ethiopia. Among the speakers are Esther Mishemi from Samchi Group, Simon Wafubua from Enwealth Financial Services, Honorable David Osiani, the CAS of Trade, Reverend Edmund Chan from Singapore, and the presiding bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries, Reverend Kalisto Odede. 
the registration fee is 2,000 Kenya shillings only. Members are also welcome to exhibit their products or services by booking the exhibition booths available on the conference website. The Lord is at work in the church today, helping us to engage in every mountain that exists that can influence the society. One of those mountains is the mountain of business. And we pray that uh, as uh, SITAM gets involved in this mountain, especially through uh, SITAM uh, Business Forum, that uh, you would be part of this. We're looking ahead to another conference, 2022 uh, CBF, uh, and we pray that you would be part and parcel of this conference as the Lord leads us into yet another glorious time of just learning how to expand our businesses, uh, how to create wealth, uh, and how to be a blessing to mission and to the church uh, through the wealth that God has enabled us to create. So be part of us uh, this year in 2022. Are you ready? to radiate God's glory in your business, don't miss out. Register now at www.cbf.sitem.org. See you there. In case you need to communicate with us, call or WhatsApp us on 0709-861-150 or do so using any of the contacts on this. Amen. This is done. That's done. That was Eric. Is this Eric and Diana? Okay, let's pray for you. Please, you can walk up here. These are intending to wed on the 1st of October. I'm sure we are all welcome, right? Okay, so let's pray for them. Father, we thank you for Eric and Diana as they intend to wed on the 1st of October. We commit them to you that, Lord, you will bless this day for them. We pray that, Lord, you will make it a beautiful day. Everything will go as planned to the glory of your name. We pray that, Lord, none will live the day feeling uh, not a happy, dear Lord. But we pray that, Lord, you go ahead of them. We commit them to you even as they come together as a couple. But, Lord, you will bless them. You will do good to them, Jehovah God. Their marriage will be an example that, Lord, what you started still works in the name of Jesus. We pray that you preserve them in their marriage. You protect them. You bless them even with children, Jehovah God. We pray that, Lord, their, wedding, their marriage will be a bliss. Oh, God, we thank you because you love your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Okay. Um, in a short while, we'll be hearing the word of God. And I will allow our senior pastor to come and introduce the speaker. But before then, we allow our worship team to give us a song. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. We are still on mission month, so we want to speak to the nations. We want them to be open. So that even as we go there, we are able to speak and people listen. Amen. Hear the sound, sound of the nations calling. Hear the sound, sound of the fatherless eyes.
Lord, we know you are setting us to the nations. Oh Lord, we can sense it. We can feel it. You are at work. You have a mission. You have a purpose. And so Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. We pray that oh God, all those thrones shall be broken. That those nations shall be opened to hear the word of God. And so Lord, we pray this morning right from our homes. May those who, are, who live with us, Lord, hear your word. We pray for where we work, Lord. May those who serve with us hear the word of God. Lord, we pray that we will hear you again. The Lord will give us courage again. They will give us the insight again. The Lord will show us the urgency to to witness for you. That is our prayer this morning. And we want to say thank you for speaking to us. May you continue to speak to us even this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We don't get tired appreciating our worship team for allowing God to use them to be a blessing to us. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate Pastor Edith for leading us so well this morning. The Lord bless you. We want to appreciate the Lord for bringing us to his house. Elder Mosa prayed, and what a prayer this morning, that to walk, to drive, to be in church, the church a blessing, the church a favor, from God. To God be the glory. This past week we had a great time here and of course online with the convention 2022, our springboard 2022. And the whole of this month we've been hearing this message again and again and I want to promise you we will hear this many more times. We are refocusing ourselves to where we should be. Missions. And so I pray that God will continue to speak to you and that you will do something about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We speak to strongholds in our own families. You know, there are those people who have refused to get saved. Those mountains must move. The others who are so near, they look so religious. Even the hills must move. Both the mountains it doesn't matter how long it has been. It doesn't matter how difficult they look. It doesn't matter how impossible they look. We want to have a list of them. Please write a list of them. And that's the list you lay your hands on. Lord, you have promised us in your word that this stronghold shall be broken in the name of Jesus. In your place of work, your boss, your colleagues. Hallelujah. The watchmen, the people who are close to you. The mountains must move. We are in a mission. And I'm also believing God that God will send some of us here to other nations. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. God will send many of us here, not some, many of us here to the nations of the world. Either in the name of studies or in the name of business, whatever it is. But I believe God who will open those doors. And please, when he opens, no, you're not going to those places just to make money or to have a good life. You have one mission. Hallelujah. To speak for Jesus. The Lord bless you. You can sense I feel like I can preach. But you have a preacher for today. Pastors, when some of us, when we hear about the Great Commission, we get moved. 
That's how we joined ministry, leaving everything else because of the desire to see the souls come to the Lord. Amen. Before I invite the speaker for today, we have two. We want to congratulate pastors who are ordained yesterday. And so today we have Reverend Lucy Mola with us. Please stand, Pastor. Yes, this is Reverend Lucy. We give glory to God. We have Reverend <laughs> Wedo, Pastor Benson Wedo with us. Please stand. We want to congratulate you upon your ordination. And then Pastor Antonius Arman. He is with us as well from Sitam, Namibia. I want him to come. We know this one. Please come. We, we want to see your face, if it has changed. We also have Reverend Danglas from Sitam, U.S. with us. We also want him to come. We want to, you know, these are our people. We sent them out there, isn't it? And as you can see, they are doing well. They are better than they left. We just want to ask them to say hi and to bring greetings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a joy to be back here in Sitam Valley Road. You know, I want to thank you. I've been sensing your prayers there in Namibia. So I want to thank all of you for keeping us in your prayers. The Lord is doing a lot of great things in Namibia. I bring you greetings all the way from Sitam, Namibia. And next year, we have a conference the, the week of the 28th of May. So we'll be having a team coming from Buruburu. And please, if there's anyone here that would like to join us for that time, we extend the invitation to you. And amen. And then I also want to thank my senior. He keeps on checking on me. So thank you so much for keeping in touch, sir. Amen. God bless. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Habari zenu? Amen. Greetings. I'm Pastor Douglas Anderson. Greetings from CTAM USA. Do you receive them? Amen. I also bring greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend John Bosco, his wife, Mrs. Bosco, my family. We send you our love and our greetings. Do you receive them? Amen. Amen. I just want to say thank you so much, Seaton Valley Road. Uh, this is, for me personally, my home away from home. Thank you for your love, your support, your prayers. They are much needed. Mm -hmm. There are many strongholds in the United States of America. But as we just sang, they're all coming down in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you. We love you. Keep praying for us. And may the Lord uh, help us to keep running this race to complete the Great Commission while we still have breath. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Let's appreciate our pastors. They were, they did their, their internship here, and uh, we were with them here for several months, and we loved them. Great men of God. And their future is great. Oh, their future is great. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I didn't know there is convention, a conference in Namibia, we will plan to go. Namibia is not as congested as Kenya. So there is, there is enough space. You can go to the city and you love it. They are quite developed. The Lord bless you. Amen. But they need Jesus there. The Lord bless you. And the U.S., we are trusting God to take U.S. In Jesus' name. We want to hear God's... Oh, we have the Reverend McKenna with us here today. Yes, yes, yes. We ask him to stand and just thank you. Former leader of Sitam Naivasha, now a Sitam head office doing SAG. Eh? Uh, thank you. Social action and advocacy is the one heading and developing that department from head office. The Lord bless you. Amen. To bring us goals one today, this month we are speaking about missions. Praise the Lord. See, Chedes are older people here. These ones don't need to be recognized. We already recognize them. Amen. Thank you. God, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. So this month we are working, on, I mean, we are preaching on missions. We are sensitizing people on missions. And we just want people to move and do something for Jesus. 
Last Saturday, we had a great preacher, isn't it? Who allowed us to see uh, the Reverend Henry and Thomas, the son of uh, late Marvin Thomas, who lived here for many years. And may the Lord bless Adrian for speaking to us. I pray that you are seeing something in your family. I pray that you have begun to see something. May the Lord continue to give us sight to see in Jesus' name. Now, to bring us God's words today is Professor Diognes Sias Keheka Kiambi, our former deacon from Karen. And uh, he is currently the DVC Academic Affairs at uh, our university. You know we have a university, Park University. He came together with his wife and it gives me great pleasure to welcome him together with his wife to come and bring God's word to us. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's appreciate him until he reaches here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Shall we pray for him? Father, we are in your presence this morning. And we know you do not gather your people in vain. We know you have a word for each one of us. And that we are prepared, Professor, uh, this morning to speak to us. Lord, give him utterance. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be so real in his life that you rejoice bringing this message to us. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. my mask during the COVID season days I realized that uh, the mouth and the nose are very unique identifiers and you may fail to recognize someone just because of the mask <laughs> so you can now recognize me as I speak to you this morning good morning church and praise the Lord Buana asifiwe. Buana asifiwe. I want to thank uh, the senior pastor also the overseer northern region for giving me this opportunity to fellowship with you today by sharing God's word. I and my wife usually fellowship at Sitam Karen, where we are founder members. We started our ministry journey at Sitam uh, Valley Road. By that time, it was NPC Valley Road, but we then moved to establish the assembly at Karen when Pastor White was charged with the responsibility of establishing that assembly. I was from a different denomination or background, as you can probably tell from my name. And it's actually my wife who introduced me to Sitam in the early 90s. And that's about the time I gave my life to Christ in a men's fellowship prayer breakfast. And she was highly instrumental to my salvation through her strong witness to me as a lifestyle. And coincidentally, that's what I'll be sharing with us today. I have served in different capacities at CITAM, including being a deacon board member. I have led several ministries at CITAM current, and we also served in some of the CITAM level committees. So I have CITAM DNA. Yeah. And if I can borrow the words from my politicians, I am CITAM DAMU. Naniko Dani, 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 CITAM. How many of you can say you are done in done in done Yeah, I can see. I have many uh, people who can identify with me of being sitam, sitam, Dani. I serve at Park University, your university, our university, and that is where leaders are made. We have many, many programs, and if you'd like to know more about our programs, just visit our website and see the wide range of programs that, that we have, but I will not say a lot about that. I'll say that uh, another time, another season. Um, I want to recognize a number of people. I know there are some colleagues of mine who had uh, committed to come and encourage me as I share the word. If you are my colleague at Park University, let me see where you are by a show of hands. Uh, I can see. Deacon Nicholas, and maybe the others who come in the other service. I also want to recognize, here yeah, I can see another colleague over there, thank you. I also want to recognize members of the governing council of Park University that are here. I know Elder Don is here, thank you, Elder. He's one of our members of the governing council. Do you have any other members of, oh, Irene, 
the Conairean, yes, the Vice Chair of Governing Council, Professor Motiga, thank you. And I also want to recognize any current students or alumina or people that are teaching for us as full-time faculty or even adjuncts. Any Park University students, alumina? Oh, I can see. <laughs> Reverend Shitende. Yeah. We have many, many um, of us that um, associated with Park as alumina. At this point, let me introduce my wife, who will ask to greet you and read the scripture that I'll be sharing from. She is my wife of 35 years. Young people and singles, there is hope. Marriages still work if you put them at the center of God. And between us, we have a married daughter and two grandsons. She's my friend. She's my prayer partner. And she's the one who gives me positive, critical feedback. Sometimes she rebukes me when I need some rebuking. I appreciate her. She has been a, a very great encourager in my journey in life. Praise the Lord and good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, I've been called uh, his wife. I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, she does. Thank you. Uh, my name is Charity Keheka. I am born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Like, uh, I'll call him my brother because we are in church. <laughs> like my brother has said. <laughs> He is a dear friend of mine, um, my friend from my youth, and uh, I thank God for giving us an opportunity to be able to stand here. This is holy ground. This is the altar, the place that uh, is set apart for God to be worshipped. And so for me, it is a privilege. I'm not ordained, I'm a lay person. But I thank God for using even us, uh, ordinary people, to reach out for his people. Like he said, it is in Sitam Valley Road. I started coming to this church in 1983 as almost, I think, 16, 17 years. And I made it my church. And the rest is history. Um, can you tell? Yes, read the scripture. I stand to be advised. Um, Please read the scripture for us. <laughs> That's what we had agreed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank Unless you. you want to change your mind, yeah. but please don't. No, I, I, I want the people of God to see that I'm an obedient wife. <laughs> so I must seek permission. Uh, our reading this morning comes from the book of First Peter. Um, First Peter chapter 1 and verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Lord bless you. Amen. That's the reading um, of the word, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate her as she sits down. During the month of September, we have been going through a series of sermons with an emphasis on missions and evangelism. The first sermon under this series was on Therefore Go by Reverend Mugambi, and I believe and I hope that uh, the message is still clear and alive in your minds. And the second sermon was on the urgency of the gospel by Adrian Thomas. And today, we shall continue with the series, and my sermon is entitled Witnessing as a lifestyle, witnessing as a lifestyle. In my message, by God's grace, I will cover the following. Definition of witnessing, and I'm sure by now you all know that definition, but I will emphasize it. The mandate to witness, the definition of lifestyle, and then I'll go through what I call the five P's of witnessing as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. The first P, the privilege of witnessing. The second P, the power of witnessing. The fourth P, the price of witnessing. And the fifth P, the prize for witnessing. 
definition of witnessing. We may have heard the phrase witness for Christ, but what does it mean? What does it really mean? Witnessing simply means telling others what you have personally experienced of the Lord Jesus Christ. For instance, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm sure you may have told your friends and family about your salvation experience and how wonderful it was. And that was your witness to them. Witnessing is a simple word, but being a witness carries a lot of responsibility with it. Witnessing should be exciting as it is a proclamation of the good news of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I gave my life to Christ about 30 years ago, I was so excited and I was burning, really burning, to share the good news, particularly with my wife who had been praying for me for many years. And also I wanted to witness to her that I have given my life to the Lord. I was also burning to witness to my family members and friends and colleagues. And one of the very first people I witnessed to is my childhood friend, a very close and dear friend, Abraham. He's a member of this assembly. I don't know whether he is in the service today. I, I think he comes for the 11 o'clock service. But Abraham, if you're here, raise up your hand. I can then I recognize you. And he is a member of this assembly, like I've said. And when he gave his life to the Lord, he himself became so excited about the news and started witnessing. And he's the one who brought his wife to the Lord through witnessing. He holds a powerful testimony to date. And there are many members of his family who have given their lives to Christ through his witnessing. The mandate to witness. We have a mandate to witness. We are mandated to witness as a commandment. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, the Lord's indisputable command to his believers is clearly recorded in Matthew 28, verse 19, which says, Go therefore and disciple all the nations. And Mark 16, 15 says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all the creation. So each one of us has been commissioned by the Lord to proclaim the good news of his salvation. The Lord Jesus commanded us to go forth with this precious gospel to all the creation, meaning everywhere, and to all the nations, meaning all the people of every kindred and every race. So we must proclaim the gospel because our Lord, the one who died for us and rose from the dead, commanded us to do so. He has given us the responsibility to witness and preach the gospel to sinners all around the world and even to the whole earth. In the book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, Paul described the Lord's commission to him. To his this was a personal commission to Paul. And this is what the Lord Paul says, what he was told. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a witness of what you have seen and what you will see. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those we have, who have been sanctified by faith in me. So witnessing is all about opening people's eyes. It's about removing darkness from their lives. It's about transferring their destiny from Satan's hands to God's hands. And witnessing can take many different forms. The testimony with our own mouths is so powerful. Telling others about the good news of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says that if you confess your, with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And this is the message that we'll be sending out there. As we testify, we need to tell people to confess with their own mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their own heart that God raised him from the dead and they will be saved. Witness can take the form of the content of our speech the choice of words, what we say, comes from the abundance of our hearts. The mouth is the loudspeaker of the heart. Choosing to speak words that edify, words that encourage, words that bring hope, words that inspire, 
can attract people to the Christ who is in us and is a powerful form of witness. The way we work and interact with people in a Christ-like manner can be a powerful witness in our offices, in other spaces that God puts us in. We may also conduct, we should, we should also conduct our lives and ex exemplify the love of God and his people. Godliness and, and integrity can also be a very powerful witness. The way we relate with people, the way we lead our personal lives can form a very, very powerful witness to unbelievers and we can bring them to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ by the way we lead our lives, by the way we treat them, by the way we handle them. It can also take the form of sharing or distributing written material of the good news, Bibles, the four spiritual laws. And I've seen many people come to Christ through a ministry that I'm involved in, the ministry of Gideons. And once you witness to someone, you give them a Bible, you go and read it and grow. So there are many different forms of witnessing, and I will not give a lot more details. Time will not allow me to do so. When you speak to people about Jesus, and they receive him as their savior, they are turned from darkness to light, and from the authority of Satan to the authority of God. They receive forgiveness of their sins and obtain a rich spiritual inheritance. More captives of Satan are released and Satan's kingdom suffers loss. We need to populate the kingdom of God and depopulate the kingdom of Satan through a lifestyle of witnessing. Amen? Amen. That's our mandate. Let's populate the kingdom of God. Let's depopulate the kingdom of Satan by a lifestyle of witnessing. Witnessing and soul winning is like rescuing a drowning person in a river or a swimming pool. This person is headed for death. But if you rescue them, you save them from dying. Some time ago, I took my family for a holiday in one of the holiday destinations in Kenya. And one of those of the days that uh, we were out there, we decided to go for swimming. I'm a fairly good swimmer myself. My wife is not so good at swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so we started our swimming escapade on the shallow end. And since I was a better swimmer, I obviously overtook her and I went far ahead of her. But just before I got to the end of the deep end, I had like a voice shouting, like the voice of my wife. And I looked back and I saw a hand disappearing deep into the water. And I knew my wife was dying. So I swam quickly back and dived and then, you know, saved her from drowning. And I put her on the side of the swimming pool and you know, started, you know, pumping to make sure that the heart is, was still, you know, on. <laughs> and I saved her from drowning. Actually, she tells me that at that point in time, she could see death. You know, she could see the reality of death. She had even given up. Because she was shouting, but nobody was paying attention. Because there were kids shouting, everybody was having a lot of excitement. So her shouting was being drowned by other voices. But I thank God, since then, she has been able to restore her confidence. And once in a while, she agrees to go swimming with me. <laughs> Definition of lifestyle. Lifestyle is the consistent, integrated way of life of an individual as typified by his or her manner, character, att attributes, attitudes, possessions, and values. It's a personal brand. It's what you are known for. And we are called to exemplify a brand of witnessing for the Lord. Witnessing as a lifestyle therefore becomes a manner of life that is integrated in all aspects of our lives. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples during dinner. As the care's home in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. In fact, on his resurrection night, he said to them, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. He was transferring his way of life into their hands and to their hearts so that they can adopt his lifestyle of witnessing. The task of witnessing that was begun by Jesus was carried on by his disciples, and it's also now in our hands. It was transferred 
from Jesus, from, from Jesus to the disciples and from the, the disciples to us. So spiritually speaking, Paul suggests that the task is a part of our spiritual DNA. He says, Father, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. From the scripture that we have read, we have heard that we are priests and the work of priests is to reconcile men to God. God reconciled us to himself through Christ and he gave us the same ministry of reconciling people to him. In other words, we have been reconciled to God and in that new life, we now call others to be reconciled to God. The disciples led a lifestyle of witnessing, emulating Christ, and leading a life that was Christ-like. And this lifestyle was very, very evident in their lives. And that's why in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, we hear that, and it was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Why? They were behaving like Christ. They were talking like Christ. They were treating other people like Christ. They were Christians. And that's what we ought to do. Behave like Christ. Talk like Christ. Treat people like Christ because we are Christians. And that's the lifestyle that we need to adopt. Amen? Amen. Let me come to the five P's of witnessing as a lifestyle. The first P is the privilege of witnessing. The privilege of witnessing. Brothers and sisters, friends, it is a privilege and a joy to work and partner with the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Creator of heaven and earth, to bring men and women into his kingdom, to redeem men and women from eternal damnation. What a privilege, what a joy. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 tells us that as God co-workers, we urge you to receive grace, God's grace, not to receive God's grace in, in vain. We have been given the grace to witness. We have been given the grace to co-work with the Lord and bring men and women into his kingdom. What a joy, what a privilege that the King of Kings can call us to partner with him in this noble ministry. It's a privilege to reconcile people to God. He brings people into our lives, orbits, so that we can share our faith with him, with them. There are many people that God brings our way in many different situations and circumstances. And we ha have that privilege of reconciling the people that God brings into our circles with God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, we are told that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and he was committed to us, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Notice the sense of the action. God reconciling the world to himself at its best witnessing is simply cooperating with God who is already attending to the person he brings into our presence. He only wants to use you and me as instruments, but are we available? Are we ready? Shouldn't we embrace that privilege? Yes, we should. And thirdly, it's a privilege to participate in the work of changing people's eternal destiny. Spiritually resurrecting the dead into life. We have got an opportunity to change people's destiny. To bring a turn around in their lives spiritually. They are headed for hell. But because of our witnesses, we can change that direction so that they can head to heaven. Amen? Amen. What a privilege what an opportunity. The second P is the power of witnessing. We have the power. And the source of that power is God himself. God has given us the power. We have the power to lead a lifestyle of witnessing. Jesus told his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Verse 8 but you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem in all, and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. A lifestyle of witnessing is not by power, it's not by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Total dependence on God to bring spiritual transformation in their lives 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. After Jesus ascended into heaven, and before the day of the Pentecost, the disciples were all scattered, and we all know that Peter and James went back to the lifestyle that they knew best, fishing. They went back to fishing. That's what they knew best. But after the Pentecost experience, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and went witnessing and spreading the gospel with power and authority. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, we see how Peter witnessed to a crowd and 3,000 people were convicted and converted to Christianity. So Peter changed from a lifestyle of fishing to a lifestyle of witnessing because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, the word of God tells us that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we may expect or even imagine. But I like the other part of that verse. According to the power that worketh in, there's a power that worketh in us. And we can activate that power in lifestyle, in the lifestyle of witnessing and bring men and women into the kingdom of God. But it takes effort to ignite that power. I equate it to a dynamite, you know. A dynamite can do wonders, but it cannot bring down stones or a building like this one. If it is not ignited, you have to light a fire and then there's a string. The fire goes burning, burning until it gets to the dynamite and then explodes. Unless you ignite dynamite, it will never explode. It has power, but it has to be ignited. We have the power and we need to ignite that power of lifestyle, adopting a lifestyle of witnessing and bring many people into the kingdom of God. And that's why we're seeing We've got the power. Don't we say that? Sing that. In the name of Jesus. Can we sing that? We've got the power. In the name of Jesus. We've got the power. In the name of the Lord. Yes, we have got the power. But what are we doing with that power? We can use that power to witness to people and bring them to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The other type of, of power is the power of words. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, the word of God tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue. When you witness or testify to an unbeliever and the person gives his life or her life to Christ, you have literally brought life into that, person's, into that person. The person is saved from eternal damnation or hellfire. God gives us many opportunities to witness about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In all duty stations of life, and as we go about our normal businesses, God presents many opportunities if we are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we are leading a lifestyle of witness, we become very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and we are able to see the opportunities God is providing for us to witness. When we are obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit, God works in the lives of the people that he brings to us in different ways, leading to their salvation and oftentimes other subsequent miracles. I remember an incident where my wife was sharing, sharing with me that the father of one of her cousins was unwell. He had been diagnosed with a, uh, with, with a swelling in the brain. He had a clot in the brain and was scheduled for surgery the following week. And when uh, she shared that with me, I asked myself, don't we have the power? Don't you have the power to heal? That's what Jesus tells us. We have got the power to heal, the power to redeem, the power to deliver. Why can't we exercise that power? So I told her, let's go and pray for this man and trust God for the healing. You know, in James chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, Is anyone of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. After church, after the service, we went home and I took oil. We went to the home of... Uh, to the home where this uh, old man was. I prayed for him. I then led him to Christ. And he was so, so joyous. You could, you could have seen the joy on his, in his face after accepting the Lord Jesus as his personal savior. And we trusted God for his healing. The following week, when he was scheduled for surgery, the doctors did us, uh, an x-ray and they wanted to find out whether he was in a good condition to be to be taken to the theater, only to realize that the swelling was no longer there. The man had been healed. Amen. 
The power of role modeling. This is one of the most powerful forms of witnessing as a lifestyle. As believers, we are expected to live lives that exemplify Christ, an open book to be read by all. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter for Christ, from Christ, the result of your ministry, written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God, not on tables or stones but on tablets of human hearts. People are watching us and people are monitoring what we do and we can testify of the goodness of grace, the goodness of God by the way we live and we can impact non-believers powerfully in our life, through our lifestyles, how we interact with them, how we treat them and how we respond to them. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, In the same way, let your light so shine before men that, you may see, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I can say my time is moving quickly, but I want to give this very short story that um, illustrates what I'm saying. Several years ago, when I was working for another institution, a young man came to me. And he told me, he asked me whether I could supervise his master's program. And I said, well, yes, because I like developing people. So I interacted with this man for about a year, helping him in many different ways, even in his personal issues. Then one day, he called me and told me, Dr. Kemby, there's something I want to tell you. Last night, I gave my life to the Lord. And the most important reason why I gave my life to the Lord is the way you have treated me. I know you are Christian. You have never told me, but I know. You are Christian, and it's because of you that I give my life to the Lord. And I felt so humbled. The way we live, the way we interact with people can bring uh, them to the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The third P, the potential of the opportunities of witnessing. The potential for reaching the world is very, very great. And with the advent of technology, we can potentially reach the whole world with witnessing. Through our social media, YouTube channels, WhatsApp status and profile messages, Twitter, Instagram, the world is now potentially our platform for witnessing. But most all the time, permanently on social media, setting all kinds of things, but not witnessing. And as I talk to you, I'm talking to myself. There are, there's room for improvement even my, in my life in terms of using social media for witnessing. I can only imagine the kind of spiritual transformation we would have if we all spent even a quarter of the time that we spend on social media witnessing using the same uh, platforms. There's potential to reach our neighborhoods. We all belong to neighborhoods, and there's a great potential and opportunities for witnessing in our neighborhoods. Many years ago, we were having cashers and fellowships in our home. And one time we had a, a kesha, and we were praising the Lord, praying, and, and all that. At 2 o'clock, I had a knock at the door, and I knew, oh, my God, they have called the police on us. And I went and opened the door, you know, shaking and, you know, not, expect, not knowing what to expect. And lo and behold, it was a neighbor, our immediate neighbor. She said, can you allow me to come in and say something? And I thought she was coming to rebuke us. But <laughs> she sat in the middle of the room and said, since you people started praising and worshiping here, I have not, I have not slept. I have been disturbed in the spirit. And I felt convicted to come and give my life to the Lord. She came. I mean, we, she knelt down We. We prayed for her and she gave her life to the Lord. That's not enough. She said, I have got some witchcraft that I've hidden in my, in my house. So we told her, go get it and we shall burn it. So she went back into her house. She brought the witchcraft, some paraphernalia, and we burnt it and praising the Lord. So you can be a witness in your neighborhood and the potential is great. <laughs> potential in the marketplace, we have talked about that. There are all kinds of spaces and opportunities to bring people into salvation, into salvation in our neighborhoods. And I've got many examples that I can give in my own personal life, but in the interest of time, I'll not give these uh, uh, examples. The potential to witness in our families, you have relatives, including spouses, fathers, mothers, brothers, that you can witness to. Myself, I'm a product of family witness. My spouse, my wife, witnessed to me. Many times until I gave my life to the Lord, I could not resist, you know, the, 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 the witnessing and the prayer. The fourth P is the price of witnessing. One of the prices of witnessing is ridicule. We are ridiculed. We suffer shame and rejection. Oftentimes, we hesitate to witness because of uh, fear of rejection and being ridiculed. 
But you have to rise above all these fears. Paul says we should not be ashamed of witnessing. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Let us not be ashamed. Let us not fear witnessing. Because it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Luke says, Luke chapter 9 verse 26 says that if anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father. So if you're ashamed of witnessing, the Lord himself will be ashamed of you at the day of, of reckoning. Witnessing has a price and a sacrifice. It takes time. It takes effort. It requires psychological and emotional and spiritual effort. But we have to do it. There's no other way. Witnessing sometimes bears the price of personal threat and risk. Steve, in the first matter, was stoned to death for testifying. And you can read the account of the death of uh, Stephen in Acts chapter 7, verse 54 to 60. We also know of Paul's own suffering for the Savior, as extensively documented in, Corinthians chapter, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The church history tells us that of the 11 disciples of Jesus, only John did not die a martyr's death. Clearly, being a witness for Jesus has the potential to be very costly and indeed, indeed. But even then, we have to lead a lifestyle of witness, witnessing. And you can read very many accounts of um, Christian martyrs from a website called The Voice of Martyrs at www.persecution.com. There are many documentaries of believers who have sacrificed their lives knowingly as a consequence of a lifestyle of witnessing. A story is told of Katrina, a young believer who lived a lifestyle of witnessing and was working as a nurse in Mulago Hospital in Uganda. In the early 60s, there was an outbreak of plague in a small town in West Nile, and patients brought into the small hospital were dying by their hundreds. When she heard about this, she asked to be transferred to that hospital and witness to those infected before they died. She was warned that the disease was lethal and fatalities were very high, but she insisted on going. And she went and witnessed to many patients, and many died having accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Eventually, she herself contracted the disease and died. She paid the ultimate price of witnessing as a lifestyle. Finally, the fifth P, the price of witnessing. One of the greatest prizes of witnessing is the rejoicing that you see in people who have been delivered from hell. The joy of seeing people shedding tears of joy and their hope restored. I once led a 92-year-old lady to the Lord in one of the homes, old people's homes in, in, in UK. And after I had led her to the Lord, tears were of joy were rolling down her cheeks. And she was saying, oh, where have you been all these years? Who has, I have never been told all these years that nobody has ever told me. And tears of joy were rolling down her cheeks. The second praise is the joy of multiplication of those we witness to. When you witness to people, they in turn witness to others. And there's a multiplication. And potentially, you can bring very, very many people to the Lord. And the third and the final praise is the reward for, faith, for faithfulness. Stephen had a standing ovation. When he was dying, he looked up and saw Jesus standing up from standing up beside the throne of grace. And all records in the Bible talk about Jesus being seated at the throne of God. But this time around, he was giving him a standing ovation. God is no man's debtor. He will reward you and me for a life of witnessing, for bringing men and women into his kingdom through the witnessing and for obedience in heeding the commandment to share the gospel. In Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, the Bible tells us, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. As we witness for the Lord, he's no man's debtor. He will recompense us. He will pay us according to our faithfulness. The person who hears the gospel bears the responsibility for responding in faith. While the person who shares the gospel, that is me and you, bears the responsibility for communicating with faithfulness. 
The results of our witness is God's responsibility, and we just need to trust him. We only need to trust him by the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of those we witness to. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, the Bible says, So my word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, and it, and it will prosper where I send it. Ours is to save for what God has put in us, the work of saving, the work of bringing them, the work of spiritual transformation belongs to the Lord. In conclusion, number one, we have defined witnessing as simply telling others what you have personally experienced of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we have seen that the mandate to witness is a commandment and we have been commissioned by the Lord to proclaim the good news of his salvation. We have also seen that witnessing as a lifestyle is a manner of life and this should be integrated in all aspects of our lives. We have also covered the five P's of witnessing as a lifestyle. The first P, the privilege of witnessing. The second P, the power of witnessing. The third P, the potential of witnessing. The fourth P, the price of witnessing. And the fifth P, the prize for witnessing. To call, the call to witnessing is a lifestyle and it begins with acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as your savior. You cannot start a lifestyle of witnessing if you do not know the Lord as your personal savior because you can't give what you don't have. It all begins with you, dedicating yourself to God. If you have not been leading a life of, of lifestyle, even if you are born again Christian, we trust God that from today, you'll adopt that lifestyle. I've got many areas of improving myself and I'm trusting God to move a notch higher in leading a lifestyle of witnessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate Professor Kiheka once again. Wow. Wow. I don't know what you are hearing God saying to you. But this is a time of reflection, personal reflection. This is a season where we need to evaluate our own lives and ask ourselves, what am I living for? What, how do people know me, my relatives, where I work? How do I handle the opportunities that God brings my way? I pray that God will help all of us to know that the opportunities he gives us to travel, to work with people, as Professor says, bringing people our way is not just for our benefit. It is so that through us, those people can be able to know the Lord, can be able to be fired up to also tell others about Jesus. Please, I want us to know that is the purpose for our being alive. That is the purpose why God has given us the jobs he has given us, good health. I pray that we have had. I want us to bow before the Lord this morning. Each one of us as individuals, because God has called you as an individual. God has brought you here all these days to hear this, this season. May we open our hearts to the Lord this morning. May we repent of lost opportunities our way, that God brought our way. Where we mixed up things, not knowing why God has brought this person our way, these situations our way, 
Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. And let us commit this morning, Lord, open my eyes. Make me sensitive. Make me sensitive to the situations, to the people that you allow me to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, in the marketplace, at home, all those opportunities. Hallelujah. And as we bow down, reflecting on our lives, you may be here or you're listening, you're watching online and you don't know Jesus as your personal savior. That's where it all begins. I want to ask you this morning as we bow down before the Lord in his presence to give your life to Jesus. You are here, you don't know Jesus as your personal savior. And you want to give your life to Jesus. Please raise up your hand and we will pray together with you this morning. Anyone who would want to receive Jesus, this is an important call. This is a great call to us. Anyone who would want to receive Jesus as their personal savior, you can raise up your hand and we will pray together with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, we have heard your word again. We want to ask you in the name of Jesus the Lord, our lives will be defined by our desire to tell others about you. Lord, we that we will speak about it. We will live it. We will see the urgency of us, O oh God, rescuing people from internal death. May that be so real in our hearts. O oh God, our Father, give us the courage. Give us the words. Give us the aeropost. Lord, give us the intentionality that we need. Oh God, this is our prayer. That our relatives will go to heaven because of us. That our friends, our colleagues will go to heaven because of us. Oh God, that is the cry of our hearts. We thank you for speaking to us. We pray that we may continue to speak to us and to guide us in your way and in your purpose. Thank you for using Professor this morning to speak to us. May you bless him and refresh him. Bless his family, O oh Lord. We pray that you bless his work at Park. That through him, the many young people who stream into that college, that university, will know you as their personal savior. The Lord has the design programs. These will not just be programs to make people have jobs. They will be programs that will be transformative for the kingdom of God. We pray for the VC. We pray for all the other staff here. We pray for the council members here. Lord, we ask you, give each one of them a burden that that university will be known world over as a university that makes leaders not only for the marketplace, but more so for the kingdom of God. That they go to marketplace, that the graduates will go to marketplace with a testimony, with the sole purpose of transforming lives for the kingdom of God. That is the cry of our hearts. We bless you, Lord. Thank you once again for speaking to us. We are yours. Do as it pleases you. As we go into the week, Lord, we ask that you will shine your light upon us. That you will clear the mountains for us. The Lord, this week we will count up many people who will give their lives to Jesus. May our children receive Jesus this week. May our parents receive Jesus this week. May our cousins receive the Lord this week. May our colleagues receive Jesus this week. 
Oh God, we ask you, make us witnesses for sure. So thank you, Lord. Even for the power that transforms people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Please let's obey the Lord. We may be ashamed. That is okay. People may think we are not very intelligent. That is okay. But let's speak out for Jesus. Let's speak out for Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord us creative on this evangelism thing. WhatsApps. You know, Facebook. And all those others. Please, just, let's just be creative. And I believe there is power. Let's not forget those peas. There is power. For us to touch. For us to say. For the Lord to do the rest. And may we receive that. May we see the tears. May we see the joy of people receiving Jesus as their personal Savior. Brothers and sisters, that's why we are alive. That's why we are serving the Lord. That's why God has preserved us here on earth for now. Before we go home. Let's, let's, let's campaign for Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord give you peace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The first time visitors, please let's follow the, let's follow the people, our welcome team, go through that door. We'll get a cup of tea in case you want to get saved, in case you need prayer. The elders are here, the pastors and the counselors. Please come. Don't go home with your challenges and problems. God is able to sort you out here today in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. We speak to nations. Be open. We speak Speak to nations, you have to please. We speak to nations, the kingdom is coming near to you. Oh, oh we speak to strongholds, be broken, powers of darkness, you have to flee.
powers of darkness. 